In this video, we're gonna take a look at the new version of HackChi CE version 3.8 that has become available for the SNES, NES, and Sega Genesis mini consoles. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right guys, so as I said, we did get HackChi 2 CE version 3.8. And I'm not gonna go over all of the major details, but if you go ahead and open up your HackChi desktop app, it will automatically prompt you that there is a new version available, and all you need to do is go ahead and hit the update button. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take a peek at some of the new features. Now, I'm not gonna go through this entire list because there is a lot of stuff on here that most people don't end up utilizing. The big features that we're gonna talk about is that we have additional controller mapping available. There is also a new metadata and art scraper. As soon as you load the game in, that artwork and all that information is automatically scraped. So you don't actually have to go in and do anything manually. And additionally, we've actually got a new design for the main window. So the reason I've got my screen displayed this way, so you can actually take a look. This is what the old version is, version 3.7. And after we do the update, you'll actually be able to see the difference there. And then another big feature that they are talking about is a major improvement to Bluetooth support. So something like a DualShock 3 or a DualShock 4 controller, if you've got one of those Bluetooth dongles connected in via OTG, you can actually pair your controller just by plugging it in with the USB drive and it'll automatically pair. And once it's paired, you can remove that cable and then you can use that controller wirelessly. So that's actually a really, really interesting feature. And then additionally with Bluetooth, the Blue Z module has been updated as well to 5.54. In terms of the console, we've actually got additional categories now. We've got racing, we've got sports, fighting and action, and we've also got shooting genres. And then they also mention improved game compatibility with internal emulators. And another one that I like here is the uh, folder artwork and some of the other artwork by the Wes 1981 has been updated. And from what I've heard, it's actually really, really good. So I'm looking forward to seeing those. And then other than that, they've also um, done an additional translation for Arabic, which is actually fairly interesting. So a big shout out to all the developers who have done this and as well to Team Shinkansen for everything that they're putting together in this HackG build. There's a bunch of bug fixes that they've got. So some people were reporting them, they were able to fix a few of them. And then there's some other changes as well. And then of course, a special thanks to all the testers and the developers and things like that. So in order to get this updated though, all we need to do is hit that update button. It'll go ahead and download that update. It should only take a minute or so. Okay, so now that it's completely successfully installed, as you guys can see, version 3.8 looks much different. And the big difference here is that the game info and the artwork info are no longer on tabs. They're just all visible right on the main screen. So I actually like this quite a bit. You're not fussing through different tabs to try to find everything. It's all just visible for you right on the main screen. So as you can see, if I go ahead and just select a game, we're going to have our artwork. We're also going to have all of the meta information. Now, as I mentioned, one of the big features that they've included here is that Hackshi will now automatically scrape your game artwork. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a few games and I'm gonna throw them on there and see how well it does. So I've got some games right over here. We're just simply gonna drag and drop them directly into our application and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, so the games have been uploaded in, now we just have to find them. Okay, so we've got them all the way up along the top where it says new app. And if we go ahead and select on the adventures of Batman and Robin, you'll actually see all the data, everything's pre-scraped. We don't have to do anything else. Essentially, we drag and drop these games in, and then we can go ahead and export them either to our console or to a USB drive. But you can do it any way that you want. Now, as you guys know, HackChi also does support additional consoles. So if you wanted to load something like Super Nintendo, Game Boy, or even PlayStation, you can go ahead and do that. And I did give a thorough walkthrough on how to do that in my previous video. So I'll leave a link in the description down below to that if that is something that's new to you. But essentially you're gonna go into your modules and then you're gonna go into the KMF, the Mods Hub, install RetroArch, and then grab whatever cores that you're gonna need as well. Then all you need to do is dump the games in and assign a core to them. So what I'm gonna do is just throw a few games from a bunch of different consoles on here. So when we go to take a look at some of the folders that we can create for this, you guys will have a better idea of what that looks like. So I'll be back in a second. 
Okay, so we're back, and as you can see, I've got a bunch of games in here uh, that I loaded up. So I've got some Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Super Nintendo, and then a few extra Sega Genesis games that we did together. Now I do want to mention that the automatic scraper is great, and it works really well for Sega games, and even for things like Super Nintendo games, but it isn't 100%. It is still an algorithm, and it's not going to catch everything. And I actually noticed that it didn't scrape for any of the Game Boy games, or any of the Game Boy Color games. So in a situation like that, we're gonna go ahead and grab all of our games, we're gonna right click on it, and then we're gonna scrape selected games. Then what it's going to do is it's going to give us a list of our games, for example, Adventure Island right over here on the left, and then it's gonna say, hey, these are all the games that we think could scrape or could be a match. So if it's not 100% sure, this is kind of where you're going to end up. Now we just have to go ahead and select that. Then we're gonna to go to Adventure Island 2. And as you can see, there's actually nothing there. So it's having trouble with the way that the game is named. So what we're gonna to try to do is adjust it a little bit and uh, see if that helps. It does, so we're good to go now. Now we just have to grab our game and we're just gonna do this with all of our other games as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip over that. Okay, so now I finished scraping the games that weren't automatically done. And as you can see, all the Game Boy games now have their appropriate artwork with them. So you do have to keep in mind that that automatic scraper is not 100% perfect. So you'll just have to keep in mind that there's definitely gonna be some titles that you still have to manually scrape. Now, another new feature that's been included is the ability to add a prefix to your game titles. So this comes in handy, for example, if you wanted to put all of your games on a single page. Let's say you're gonna add maybe two or three games from a bunch of various consoles. The easiest way to do that is going to be by adding the prefix so you know which game belongs to which console. And it's really simple to do that. You'll highlight a bunch of the games, you'll right click and you'll add a prefix. The way that they've designed this prefix feature is you'll essentially assign whatever text you want and then a colon will automatically come in after that and they will automatically produce a space as well. So in this case, all we have to do is type in GB for Game Boy and we hit OK. And what you're gonna notice now is all the games have this prefix there. If you don't want that there, not a problem. We can remove it just as easily. We go ahead and select everything, right click, go to remove prefix, type in GB again and hit enter. And now all the prefixes are gone. But that's more or less it in terms of the actual desktop software. What we're gonna go ahead and do is take a peek at some of the new artwork that's available for our folders. So we have to go into structure and then we have to click on custom. And now that we've got our folders manager open, you're gonna see that our games are kind of all mixed in together. So as you can see, we've got some of our Genesis games. We've also got our Game Boy games. We've got Super Nintendo in here mixed in with our Genesis again. What we want to do is sort these up any way that you really want. So if you go ahead and hit the home menu folder, you've got a bunch of options. So you can either split them equally, you can also split them up by first name, and then additionally you can split by console. Now splitting by console is the way that I would do it. We're gonna split by console, and it's going to automatically do that for us. So if you go ahead and click on Game Boy, all of our games are going to be in there. And if we go to our Super Nintendo, same thing, our Super Nintendo games are all going to be there just the same. But what we want to do is take a look at some of our folder artwork options. So if we go to Game Boy and then we click on this folder right over here, you're going to see that we've actually got a bunch of different options now. Because this folder specifically for Game Boy, I am gonna choose that. You just have to scroll on down and then select it from the list. But there's a bunch of other options. So you could choose icons. So this Game Boy Play It Loud blue, black, green, whatever color you want to choose. And then of course, if you go down as well, there is additional artwork for genres. So if you're not structuring your builds based off of consoles and you'd rather do them by genre, you can absolutely do that. So if you selected sports, you can see that there is a custom sports uh, menu icon here. But like I said, I'm going to be using the Game Boy artwork. So we just need to find that. We're gonna hit okay. And now as you can see, the artwork has changed. And I'm just gonna go ahead and skip over me doing the other folders. Okay, so my folders are now selected. The other thing that we're gonna to wanna to consider doing is creating subfolders within these folders. You want to keep in mind, we don't really want more than 80 items on any given page. Otherwise the console has a very hard time keeping up with it and you end up with some very sluggish performance in the menus. So what I actually recommend doing is if you wanna set things up in terms of your consoles for your main folders and then within those folders you can split them up by their first letter so if you select any specific folder for example game boy if we hit split by first letter it'll automatically do that 
and it'll only give you the folders for the games that actually fit into those folders. So you don't end up with the entire alphabet when half those folders have no games in it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that for all of our uh, consoles that we've got, and it'll just take a second to do that. Perfect. So now that that's done, what we can do here is go ahead and hit OK. And then we want to export this to our USB drive. Now you can choose to export it to a USB drive or you can sync it up to your console. That's entirely up to you. I prefer to use the USB drive, so that's what I'm gonna do. We hit export to USB. We're gonna choose where it's going to go. In my case, it is the iDrive. We're gonna hit OK. It's already got our pre-structured folders ready to go. And now all we have to do is hit OK. Now this is gonna take a minute or so. I'm gonna go ahead and skip over this, but when we get back, I'm just gonna go ahead and take my USB drive out, pop it into my Sega Genesis Mini and show you guys how that looks. We're now on our Genesis Mini and we've got all of our folders right in front of us, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Super Nintendo and Genesis. And then of course, when we go into any of those folders, you'll see that they are in alphabetical order as well. So those folders are working perfectly. They were in the previous build. Uh, we've just got a little bit more uh, updated artwork and things like that. So it's nice to see uh, that they're keeping up with the artwork and making sure things are as clean and crisp as much as possible. Now, the only other thing I mentioned earlier on in the video that I haven't touched on yet is the Bluetooth. And I can't really show you guys that because I don't have a Bluetooth dongle. I never connect my devices via a Bluetooth controller. I always have liked to have my controllers hardwired in. Um, so I don't have one of those, but I can tell you that it does work. I've seen a lot of feedback from people using it. It's quite simple. Just pop in your Bluetooth adapter, plug in your PS3 or PS4 controller. It'll automatically pair then you can remove that cable and it'll still function. So that is really nice, it is a handy feature, but that's pretty much it. All in all, the Hackchi build for Genesis Mini is really clean and it's really nice for people who are just looking for something super simple. Load up your games, have your folders, play your games, and that's it. Now, of course, there are a bunch of other mods and ports. If you take a look in the KMFD Mods Hub, you'll see there's a ton of other options and you can certainly play around with those. But generally speaking, I actually like keeping my Sega Genesis fairly simple. So that's pretty much all I've got for you guys in this video. Please consider subscribing to the channel, give the video a thumbs up or hit that thumbs down button if you did not like this. Let me know in the comment section below if these features are things that you like what do you hope that Hackchi can do in the future? And uh, hopefully the guys on the development team will get that information and possibly implement it. But uh, thank you so very much for watching and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.